Great. Well, welcome everybody um, to our second community engagement for Parkmore Hub. Um, we are really excited to have you back or welcome people who are new and joining us for the first time. Um, I look forward to meeting a lot of you or continue our dialogues um, during this meeting as well as uh, offline one-on-one. -on -one. There are a lot of familiar faces already in the audience, but there are also new faces. So we appreciate everyone's time and taking your evening out to learn a little bit more about the project and also see continuation um, since our last meeting uh, on the 25th of August. My name is Macy Leung and I'm a senior project manager at Allied Housing. Um, joining us, we have uh, several county staff and also our project team, which I'll go through introduction in a second. Next slide. Oh, I can do that. Um, okay, I'm having trouble with next slide. There we go. Um, so today's meeting is uh, our second engagement meeting. We have a series of three meetings for the uh, Parkmore Hub projects, uh, specifically with the larger community stakeholders and the youth. And our first one was August 25th. Today's our second one. And we're going to have another one on October 13th. And I believe all the flyers have been sent out and we will be following up with emails and invite everyone back to our future meeting. The session is um, visioning for today's meeting. So you'll hear a little bit about the design and progress since the last meeting. Next slide. Uh, next slide, there we go. So today's agenda is gonna be as follows. Um, I will be doing a quick welcome and introduction, and we're going to talk a little bit about the project and site history um, by County of Santa Clara Office of Supportive Housing. Um, we're gonna talk about the mission of the hub and a project overview and the team, as well as our community outreach and engagement effort to date. Um, HKIT architect team will talk a little bit about the site context and analysis to date and they will be sharing massing studies and also design feasibility to date. Um, then we'll go into specifically the engagement session objective today, which is to get additional feedback and input um, for the design that's there that HKIT has been working on and also additional feedback from um, the community and the youth. And then we're gonna have a wrap up and summary and feedback in general and open up to Q&A. Next slide. We want to thank you for um, all of your inputs and everyone's thoughts and involvement and support thus far. Uh, specifically, thank you to Supervisor Cindy Schaffer's office and Susan Ellenberg's office and Council Member Deb Davis' office and all of the county departments and staff, as well as City of San Jose staff um, and offices. Next slide. We want to also thank you specifically to all these organizations and neighborhoods that I have spoken with and also have shared support and excitement um, on this project and a lot of uh, companies and all of the tenants around Parkmore Plaza and Savannah Center, uh, churches around the neighborhood as well. Next slide. Um, with that said, I'd like to turn this over to Andrew Barnes from Office of Supportive Housing at County of Santa Clara to talk about the history and the project. Andrew? Thank you, amazing. Yes, I'm sorry. I, there's insufficient space, so I'm trying to make sure the recording is continuing. There we go. Thank you. So first of all, thanks to everyone who's joining us this evening, taking time out of your evening. We are really excited to be talking about this important project. A background on the project. Uh, this project, uh, this site, excuse me, the county acquired this site in August of 2017. It's currently occupied with four vacant office buildings. These office buildings were built in the late 1970s uh, and they will be demolished. Uh, really, this project is a function of two things, a desire to relocate the existing hub into a larger, more functional space from its current location. And it's also an opportunity for housing. It's an opportunity to co-locate housing for youth uh, with on-site services. 
Our analysis uh, here at the county and through our development partners and various partners show that this site is very well positioned uh, for both the hub usage and for housing. And you'll see some of this get unpacked as we go through the presentation this evening. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the developer selection process. Essentially, how did the county, thank you, how did the county arrive at uh, Allied Housing Abode Services as our development partner? At the county, we have something called a qualified pool of affordable housing developers. This is a pre-qualified, pre-selected pool of developers who, through a competitive process, are allowed to submit proposals on projects that the county has and wishes to develop. Uh, in this case, for this particular project, the county issued a request for offer. We call it RFO uh, in December of 2020 through a competitive process. The uh, Allied Housing in Abode was selected. And after that, the County Board of Supervisors, excuse me, was recommended for selection. And then pursuant to the recommendation, the County Board of Supervisors uh, approved the selection of Allied Housing in Abode Services. What does that bring us to now? Speaking specifically to the housing opportunity for this site, this uh, is a unique opportunity for affordable housing, which will have a focus on transitional age youth, the acronym T, and complementary target populations. Uh, we are looking at approximately 21 units uh, in total for the project. Uh, affordable, affordability levels and unit types are being evaluated for the project. And as it relates to the resident selection and who's going to be in there, we, along with our development partners and other partners, are looking at successful models for projects with similar objectives in terms of our um, resident population. Thank you, Macy. Back to you. Andrew, um, so I would love to have um, a little bit of an overview for the hub. Next slide. And I'd like to invite uh, either Nayeli or Dawn from the counties um, to share a little bit about the hub's mission and the hub's background overview. Nayeli or Dawn? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Nayeli. I am one of the youth members at the hub. I am part of the youth leadership committee at the hub. Um, and I would like to tell you some things about the hub's mission. Um, for um, all of you that are new to the hub, we are a youth-led organized community where um, we focus on dedicating our time. Um, we, we want this space to be um, somewhere where they can feel welcome, where they feel empowered, and where they can come in for different services. Um, what the hub is, it's a one-stop center for all types of different services, such as housing, um, food, um, if you need to do your laundry and um, that sort of stuff. Um, it is um, a space where, again, they can feel welcomed. It is um, a space um, where they can just come in and um, feel relaxed, hang out. Um, we are a... Um, trauma-informed space um, where um, youth can feel um, safe. Um, and we also um, offer different programs. We can help um, find um, other services that we don't offer to youth. Uh, we can help them find any services that they want. And Don, if you want to take it, Sure, thank you, Nayeli. Next slide, please. So thank you, Nayeli, for um, expanding on all that and um, providing a little context and mission of the, um, of the hub. Um, good, evening. good evening, folks. My name is Don Long. I'm, a, I'm one of the program managers at DSES, or uh, Department of Family and Children's Services. Welcome to tonight's forum. So as Nayeli has explained, it's an integrated model of service for our youth. And, you know, it's a one-stop shop. They, you know, they're able to come there and, uh, and obtain all sorts of resources. So I just want to go over some of the offerings that we have. Um, chiefly, there is the uh, leadership development and youth empowerment. 
that but to develop uh, the voice and empowerment and, and self-advocacy towards you know um, programs and services that they feel or need for themselves uh, there's a lot of peer support it's um, peer run in a lot of ways as well as um, staffing by those who have um, experience within the sphere there's independent living programs that are tied to it that entails uh, financial literacy and uh, other life skills trainings um, it's connected to our internet learning program as well that allows youth to obtain paid internship programs as they develop those soft skills and social capital uh, towards uh, school and earn money and you know future careers and so forth there's housing assistance like I, like I said um, through our transitional housing programs up to age 25 um, there's parent social, parent kids socials. There's um, educational tracks and services. There's legal advice and special events that are put on um, by our providers, the Bill Wilson Center and others um, for the youth. And really, it, it, it's a youth-led design um, that we're looking at, and there's an opportunity for us to expand on services as well as, well as move into a new space that is completely dedicated to our foster youth and the transitional age um, youth. Um, you know, and, and one thing I want to ask the audience to visualize, you know, when you were 18 or maybe 25 or so, were you prepared to live on your own? It's really the mission of the, of the department and the community to help our foster youth develop those skill sets and abilities to be self sufficient. And it's a hard task that we're asking them to do. And uh, this project is going to help us. Um, expand on some of those offerings and really tie it to housing as well and give them more, the leg of a knee to really succeed. Thank you, Don. So with that, I'll turn it back to Macy. Great. Thank you, Don. Um, well, with that said, I'd like to introduce us to our project team. Um, next slide. And also a little bit of an overview of the project. So um, as Andrew had mentioned previously, the project is uh, located on 1510 to 1540 Parkmore Avenue in San Jose. And it, it has a new hub on the ground floor with residence units up to 81 units on top. It's also a, a new construction, a tax credit finance project, and it's sustainable and it's all electric. So really excited to introduce a project that's all electric and environmentally um, sound. Uh, the county will be demolishing existing uh, vacant structures to four buildings on site. The ground floor hub space for youth is going to be between uh, serving 15 to 24 year old youth and upper stories are affordable housing that will be over the hub. We will have surface parking and car stackers, as well as um, the construction type is going to be a wood frame over podium and uh, the podium will be the hub on the ground floor. Next slide. Uh, our project team, as mentioned slightly earlier, um, we are in keen and close partnership and we love working with everyone here, including the hub's youth as first and foremost priority, as well as hub staff and partners and the city and county, specifically County of Santa Clara, um, Office of Supportive Housing and all the county of Santa Clara departments. Uh, we allied housing services developer of the project and we have property manager, the John Stewart Company, who will be managing the housing portion. The um, hub services will be continuously managed by County of Santa Clara, and the housing services will be managed by abode services. Our architect team is HKIT, who you'll hear from shortly. And we have financial consultant, um, CHPC, and among other few members. Community engagement today. And this is um, uh, started in Q2 in 2021. And our uh, quick overview of the project schedule is this. So community engagement started um, since we so were selected as the preferred developer. And we're working with the county currently on the development and disposition agreement. Um, we're currently in the schematic design phase and um, going forward with entitlement um, process. Design development is going to be Q4 2021, end of this year. Um, and then our construction and document and permitting will be in 2022. We're expecting construction to be in 2023, um, ending 2024 and lease up will be um, starting before construction completion. Next slide. Uh, next slide. So we recognize that this project is a really close partnership with our youth and 
county, city, and all the community stakeholders. It's a really important project for the county and city and for us as well. Um, and we are really excited to partner with everyone. So we're approaching this engagement um, for the project with a listen first, and then let's get together and dialogue and get things done and be really inclusive throughout the whole process. Um, we have several key outreach on the larger scale. This is one of them, as well as smaller interactive design sessions, workshop, one-on-one -on -one interviews, Zoom meetings, which I had many already with many of you, mailers, email, et cetera. Um, and we also have several key stakeholders are reached out to as well as the youth as well. Next slide. Uh, to date, as mentioned earlier, this is the visioning session. So we're in our outreach number two, and we're gonna have another one on um, in October for the design session. So I hope everyone can come back then and see everyone, um, share with everyone the design progress. We have ongoing one-on-one -on -one meetings, associations and continuous hub design meeting. Next slide. Um, we are definitely listening to you either during this meeting or outside of this meeting as well as on a continuous basis. So if you have any questions or want to reach out, this is my email. Um, many of you have that, but please feel free to email me to set up one-on-one -on -one meeting, ongoing discussion. And if there's any thoughts and comments you have that's outside of this meeting or you just thought of an idea or wanted to share what your concerns are, or some design you know, recommendation. We also have a Google Sheet that's open continuously and I check every single day. And we're gonna put this on the chat box so everyone can have that as well. And that's presence throughout the whole design, uh, throughout the whole project process that anytime you have any thoughts, comments, feel free to, um, feel free to uh, record your thoughts as well. Next slide. So to date, we have a lot of um, community engagement outreach. I have spoken with every single and reached out to every single neighborhood association um, that's color coded here. Next slide. As well as um, send out flyers and mailers uh, within 2000 feet radius of the site with the neighborhoods as well as businesses that's located in this area. And this is the flyer that everyone should have received. Next slide. And special thank you um, for all of the meetings um, that I have set up and also spoken with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Everyone on the red dots on this map, I have set up a meeting with and spoken with, um, as well as walking the site to meet every single businesses that's around the neighborhood, all the pink and all the green, as well as all the red. Um, we have passed a flyer in person. I've spoken to every single one of you, as well as the San Jose slide. And anyone outside of this site, um, again, thank you also. We have reached out to many of these uh, folks. So all the tech company, thank you to LinkedIn for sharing thoughts about who um, would be interested in Facebook, et cetera, and all the policy organizations and nonprofits, as well as City of San Jose staff. Um, thank you again for that, for spending time with me and sharing with me your thoughts, your comments, and your um, suggestions, we have taken those very seriously and incorporated them throughout the whole design process. And this will be a continuous effort. Um, this is an example of a neighborhood association, Buena Vista, which is across the street. So I presented to the neighborhood. There were some great suggestions by the neighborhood association in terms of the site and also the design, the facade, um, some great idea about planting and art, et cetera. So thank you for that. And we will be going back to the neighborhood association as long as um, they would like us to, and also other uh, community engagement groups and, lead, and individuals on continuous outreach and discussion throughout this whole process. So it's not just a one-time meeting and then you won't hear from us. We like to continue this dialogue and incorporate more feedback. Next slide. With that, I'm gonna turn this over to HKIT with um, Paul and Rob. Paul? Macy, yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Paul McElvey. I'm principal at HKIT Architects, and I'm joined tonight by Rod Henney, our design director, also Akshata Atre, uh, one of our designers and uh, nearby neighbor, actually, of the project. Um, also, we've got Ariella on the call as well. He's uh, from our interiors department at HKIT. We are so excited um, to be part of this project. It's a really um, wonderful opportunity to provide much needed housing. 
as well as a forever home for the hub. And we're, we're so inspired by the mission of the, uh, take us to the next slide, please. Um, nice to see so many familiar faces and those who joined us last time and, and folks who are new as well. I just wanted to do a quick uh, overview of the site and um, orient folks as we go into some graphics that explain our design intentions. Um, as Andrew uh, explained earlier, we're looking at the site in the middle of this slide, you'll see a triangular site. This is the four buildings uh, that are existing that will be removed for the new uh, facility. Um, we have three principal frontages to the site. Um, the main one is the Parkmore uh, frontage, uh, which is shown in images uh, four, five, and six here on the screen. Um, it's a wide street. It really serves as a, as a collector for the freeway, and uh, it has a parking lot on either side, uh, the shopping center across the street, and then the parking lot on our uh, site uh, that uh, is across the side. So Meridian is the uh, side facing the uh, east. It's a wider street, and it has a median divider. It really is a crossing of the freeway. It's not a pedestrian street. There's no sidewalk, um, and uh, we're um, we're going to be setting our building about 10 feet off of Meridian. Um, finally, the, the side facing the freeway, images seven and eight, um, give you a sense of um, the disposition of the freeway in respect to the site. With these images, you can see that there's about 30 feet or so of vertical drop between where the site occurs and the existing buildings, um, which are actually kind of hard to see in these pictures because they're behind a grove of trees. There's this, this thick grove of existing redwoods, which we intend to maintain. Um, the, the drop in height combined with the thick growth of trees really gives us a nice buffer from the freeway in terms of noise and dust. Uh, can we go to the next uh, slide, please, Shata? Um, this view uh, really just zooms out a bit to uh, show the overall context, the freeway to the south. Uh, you'll see on the left side of the screen, there's a pedestrian bridge that connects to the uh, broader neighborhood to the south. Uh, and on the right side of the screen, uh, running diagonally, you can see actually the VTA line that runs through and the tracks and the stations that are uh, uh, quite close to the site as well. Um, could we go to the next slide, please? Uh, this uh, slide really meant to illustrate it, as Macy talked uh, about earlier, we've, we've done a, a, quite a bit of outreach and, and, and Allied's been uh, partnering with a number of neighborhood associations. Uh, this is just really to give context. Our site is within the Buena Vista Neighborhood Association and um, for uh, just for orientation, you can see in the upper right hand corner that we're, we're fairly close to downtown San Jose. So the, the new home for the uh, Parkmore Housing and Hub is really kind of in the heart of um, the, really the, uh, the action as far as the neighborhoods here in San Jose. Next slide, please. Uh, an, another analysis we did was really uh, critical for us is to understand the transit connections. And um, as you can see from this slide, our site is within a short walk of many uh, transit stops. There is uh, a number of bus lines within these circles, which represent these, these dash circles you'll see on the screen, which represent uh, a certain distance of walk or 10 to 15 minutes to these bus lines. Um, there's also a blue line that runs throughout the uh, project. This is actually the VTA light rail. And uh, our, you can see a couple of the stations that are listed there. Um, and forgive me if I don't know the names of these stations, but uh, we've kind of rare in, in the context of San Jose that we were close to two of the VTA stops. And uh, it's really provides a lot of transit options for the site that's quite well, well served. Uh, uh, could we go to the next slide, please? The next slide. Um, this um, illustrates, again, uh, some of the, the analysis we've done to really uh, look at the connections between the, the new community that we're building and the surrounding amenities, whether they be parks or schools, um, shopping, uh, so forth. Um, and you can see that we've, we've actually had quite a bit, um, just given kind of the, the rich uh, neighborhoods around us and the, the, the amount of amenities is, is um, uh, pretty substantial. And with that, um, I'd like to turn this presentation over to Rod Henry to talk a little bit about some of the design studies we've been working on so far. Um, thank you, and go ahead, Rod. Thanks, Paul. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we just uh, wanted to continue a little bit of that analysis. This slide shows the uh, vehicular context um, where um, Parkmore is two-way, but in front of our site, 
but only western bound once you get west of our site. Um, the highway uh, uh, exit south of our site is uh, people getting off at about 50 miles an hour, so it's fairly uh, busy. Um, Paul already mentioned the, uh, the bridge that crosses over. And um, Radian, as you all know, is a very busy street. Um, you can't cross the highway as a pedestrian or a bicyclist. So it's, uh, it has an exit uh, and an entrance onto 2A. Next slide, please. Um, the, uh, what's important for all of uh, you to understand is that the green area, which is the southern part of the site, is the only place we can put a building. The brown area toward Parkmore uh, doesn't allow a building to be built because there are some utility easements in there, but it does allow parking. Um, so it's a kind of natural place for parking to occur uh, closer to the street. And on the west edge, the blue square is a cell phone tower that will uh, need, that will be retained. And finally, the hub is the, uh, the white dot uh, oval shape. 17,000 square feet is quite a sizable uh, area needs to be on one story. And so you can see it takes up much of the site of that green area. Next slide, please. Um, the uh, sidewalks and pedestrian circulation north of, Park, of uh, Parkmore, it, uh, it continues all the way out to the west. Um, but the sidewalk in front of our site does it continue across our site, but not further west. It stops. Uh, because of that exit from the highway. And so really, if you're heading west as a pedestrian, you need to get to the north side of Parkmore. Um, and that's very important. And in order to uh, make things most convenient and safe from, from the crosswalk, uh, a hub entry uh, needs to be accessed easily from the three crosswalks. Next slide, please. Um, and there's a, a large existing oak tree in the front of the site that we are working hard to retain. It's a really nice feature. On the south, um, as we already mentioned, a lot of existing trees that screen from the highway. Next slide, please. Um, the sun um, from in the winter, which is the lowest set, uh, the sun rises from the southeast and sets in the northwest, oh, sorry, southwest. Um, whereas during the summer, um, as uh, the sun gets all the way to the northeast, rises in the northeast and sets in the northwest. Um, and so we uh, want to make sure we pay careful attention to this pass. Next slide, please. Um, and an important issue is the uh, noise from the freeway and also the dust uh, and a poor air quality that results from the freeway. Um, and Meridian is also a busy street, but not as much of an impact as the freeway and then Parkmore, relatively speaking, of the three is, uh, is uh, the, the least impactful. Next slide, please. Um, so one or two uh, mentioned some of the things that we heard from the uh, previous meeting. Uh, we heard about how important it is for the pedestrian uh, access and safety that art, um, people really uh, thought that that was great. And um, we talked about how that might be done a little bit. We'll talk more about it today. Uh, sustainability is important. Next slide, please. That exterior design, you want a building that has depth and a timeless um, design and it's contemporary, uh, warm, welcoming colors. There was concerns about the noise from the freeway was expressed. The hub we've heard needs to be home-like and welcoming. Uh, landscaping, lots of greenery and gardens and outdoor living spaces are important. Next. And um, so we wanted to show you what we're recommending as a, a massing. Um, this of course is not a design and it doesn't also reflect the colors, but uh, just as a coding, the white indicates the housing and we will in order to meet the program and provide these 81 new homes, we're looking at four stories of housing at about that length, as you can see. The orangish color is an indication of the hub on the first story, and the uh, blue indicates the services that we need for the housing. You can see the tree in the foreground, and on the right, that funny little thing is the, is the cell tower. Uh, by the way, sorry, Parkmore is to the front with a highway behind. 
Next slide, please. So let me tell you um, why we are uh, recommending this massing scheme. And, and I guess somewhat ironically, it does sit pretty much where the existing office building sits, the housing portion at least. Um, so we have pushed the housing portion, the taller mass up toward, uh, toward the freeway. Um, and that's because that noise from the freeway, this, this uh, taller mass acts as a great um, sound wall. So it blocks the sound and much of the dust coming from the freeway and allows the open space toward Parkmar to be um, shielded and uh, therefore quieter and cleaner. Um, and uh, this was, as we mentioned, one of the concerns we heard from all of you and as well is it's an important concern. And the next slide, please. The second issue that we heard about was the pedestrian access and safety is important. So uh, there, there's only one crosswalk um, and we don't want uh, to encourage um, anybody to be jaywalking and shortcutting around the, off the, around the middle of the block. So by placing the key entry for the hub um, closer to the crosswalk that encourages people to use the crosswalk. Um, we're gonna move our parking entry um, away from the corner so we don't have conflicts. Um, we, uh, we're shielding the, the building from Meridian as well. So it, it discourages uh, uh, pedestrian traffic along that street. Next slide, please. And um, then we heard, as you, as you heard, about the idea of the hub needs to be really welcoming. We want the hub to feel like a home. So uh, by pushing the mass of the building, the taller portion back, that allows the hub, which is in the, in the foreground, to be a lower, more humane and um, inviting um, height. Um, and so uh, we push the tallest port back and let the hub be the portion that is in the foreground and really, really the first thing that comes to, that invites you in. Next slide, please. Um, so here is the drawing and on the drawing on the left, uh, which is the park more in the foreground, you can see the blue is the parking area. And this scheme also provides the most parking because by pushing the building back, we can use that part on the front of the site that I mentioned is where we, can, we can't build anyway. So we can, we can use that portion to provide parking. So this scheme, uh, we're gonna show you two alternatives, provides the most parking of all three. And then on the drawing on the right, you can see how it pushes up closer to the freeway and uh, closer to Meridian. Next slide, please. But we did look at, um, considered some other options. This one shows if you take that L shape and made it straight, so the housing is now a straight bar, um, we, it creates a big wall along Parkmore. And we thought that this was not the right, right way to create that sense of welcoming and, in, and home for the hub. Um, the second thing is you can see on the right drawing, it puts the open space and the hub facing the highway, um, which means that that noise and um, dirt is, is not shielded, but in fact sort of uh, amplified because the taller wall of the building reflects the sound back down. Um, so uh, this was not something that we thought was a, was a, a good, good direction to go. Next slide, please. Um, the second study is um, essentially that L uh, that we have, but turned the other way. So in, this, in the shot on the right, you can see how the hub now faces the highway instead of facing Parkmore. Um, <clears throat> and it has the same problems with noise and dirt that I mentioned on the other scheme. And secondly, you can see how it has a more massive closed feeling from Parkmore. And we, again, thought that this was not the right way to create that sense of welcome. So that's why we've, uh, we're, we're suggesting this, uh, this massing scheme. Next slide, please. Um, so next, please. So um, we are now going to uh, be going into our, our uh, input session with you. Um, we're really looking for your input. We'll hope you'll speak up. We're going to ask um, all of you who wish to speak to go ahead and unmute. Um, we'll, well, maybe unless you're 
Your dogs are barking. Um, anyway, uh, but we are asking, going to be asking for your thoughts on art, aesthetics, and landscaping. Next slide, please. And we are going to be using Jamboards, Google Jamboards. Uh, we will be putting a note up on how you can write your own notes um, via the Jamboard. But uh, we also intend to uh, have a scribe. Akshata will be our scribe, and she. So you can say what your what your thoughts are. We will record it, and we will put it as a little post-it on our Jamboard. Next slide, please. So um, here's here's the Jamboard and um, the, the steps in terms of um, you can go to the feature. You can see um, that's highlighted, and that allows you to do a sticky note. And then to write your thoughts. Um, would you like to do so? Or you can just speak it out and we will note it for you. Next, please. Um, so we're going to shift the jam board. Just one second. And I'm putting the jam board link in the chat right now again, if you would like to go into it yourself. Okay, here we go. Okay, so first we'd, we, we'd like to, um, to get the introductions. It'd be great to know of the people who are, are visiting neighbors and um, concerned public, etc. cetera. Um, if you'd like to give us your name and neighborhood um, or where you work or live, um, we'd like to put it down. It's, it'd be great to know and uh, get a sense of where everybody is. So um, we have quite a few people on the line here, but if we can focus on the, on the uh, visitors and uh, concerned public, perhaps uh, each one of you could call out and we will put it down. Who wants to start? I'll start, this is Tony Miranda representing the uh, San Jose Chamber of Commerce. Excellent, thank you, Tony. One person and next. Okay, I'm I'm Susan Price Jang, and I come from the Rose Glen neighborhood, about two blocks from 280. Just ah, uh, great. Yeah, we can see right right where you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Block put her note down. That's great. Are you Akshata? Are you able to add? Oh, you you got it. Okay. Great. Anybody, next person. Let's move along here and be great to get this input. So I'm Karen Armour from First Congregational Church of San Jose. Excellent, thank you. Next. Hi, I'm Joe Stone. Uh, from Cornerstone Church of Silicon Valley uh, on Meridian and Fruitdale. Oh, great. That's great. People are adding their, uh, their own notes. That's excellent. Anybody else want to add in? Okay, well, thank you. Let's uh, move on. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, welcome to um, add on. Go ahead. Alex said, um, "Kellis SV and Shasta Hunter Park residents also." Excellent. Great. Thank you, and you're welcome to add on as uh, at any time. So, okay, let's go to the uh, next slide, please. So uh, one of the things you expressed uh, a lot of excitement about the idea of art. Um, we thought it might, uh, it would be great to get your input on possible areas to include art. Um, so we have some choices here and we'd like to uh, get a sense um, again of, of your um, 
uh, oh, good, people are writing in the chat. That's great, that's a good way to do it. So number one is a large area that can be um, uh, sort of more centralized in the, uh, uh, over the uh, face of the building facing Parkmore. Number two is along the face of the hub and it could even wrap all the way to the corner or around the corner. Number three is uh, a large face facing the corner of Meridian and Parkmore. Number four is uh, perhaps a sculpture that would be down the, near the housing entrance, which is on that end. Our number five could be a freestanding piece, which is closer toward the corner again, um, and that end. Um, and, and, the, and number six is we're just showing the idea of a metal screen. This, is, this we did for a building in the mission where uh, because of the na nature of the neighborhood, we, we made it uh, reference the uh, Mexican uh, cut paper cuts. Um, and the point would be that we can make these um, kind of specific to a neighborhood and specific to uh, the nature of a place. So um, that's great. You're populating it. Feel free to keep going. Um, and if you uh, would prefer to say um, what you prefer, then we can add it. Uh, we can add it ourselves with our scribe. So we'll give you a few minutes. Do you only need one choice? Um, you can choose more. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll just say, yeah, you can choose, choose as many as you like. I'm gonna read out in the chat box. Um, Susan said, I vote for three, and Nicole said three and four. Dora in three, five and six looks good. Maria is three, Maya is three. Monica said, mirror on windows or tinted windows for the confidentiality of the youth coming into services. And we have Yusuf three, Hubert three, Michelle like one and three, Karen three. So many, many threes. Okay. Thank you for coming. How, yeah, would... how are you getting these um, post-it notes? I, I went into, this is Susan. I went into chat and voted for number three. Did that elicit a, a one or or how <laughs> um how do you get yeah these? if you put it if you put it in the chat i added a note for you oh okay but if we don't if you don't do the chat what, what is there something up here that does the where's the akshata will do it in real time so if you say you like three then akshata will put a plus one on number three yourself for you okay. they can call it out as well Oh, all right. Okay. Yes. And Helen said three, and James said three also. On Windows. That's a three. Okay. Yeah, we'll take another another minute or two. I think it's a three. I, I think a. Uh, I'd also four four for a sculpture. That would that would be nice. Okay. okay. I'd say right. five, but it might get kind of vandalized because that's kind of a raw corner. Mm -hmm. There have been mm. homeless people living there, and also along the uh, that along the the um, freeway. Mm. Mm -hmm. So three and four. That's a good point. Uh, that one actually, the yeah five. Yep. But then, if we have windows looking out on, yes, that's less likely to be. Yeah, the the whole site will dr change dramatically when. Um, this uh, project happens. Okay. And Courtney said one, two, and three. It would be great to see murals in all three spots. <laughs> okay. I love that. Yeah. More art, the better. Any other thoughts about this? Please put it in the chat box or call it out and mute yourself. Okay. Why don't, uh, are we good? Oh, Brianna said one, three, and four. Brianna said, yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Brianna. Okay. Art, art can be a, a remarkable thing in terms of activating a place um, when, when it's done right, with, meaning with the, with the participation of the hub youth and participation and concern for the community and the neighborhood um, it can it can people can uh, really belong to it mm -hmm. and it can really uh, be specific and special so it's uh, it's a wonderful thing to include 
Mm -hmm. It looks like Rob, you have many threes, ones, yeah. and twos. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, um, this is Susan again. The number six screen mm -hmm. could, could be if if the top of the hub is used as some kind of a garden or outdoor seating area for the residents. Uh, the screen, like in number six, could be uh, the fence mm -hmm. at the along top. the edge. Yep. Along the edge. Yep. Yep. Well, that's a great segue. Perfect segue to this uh, uh, next slide and uh, next one where we're uh, we'd like to get um, just uh, show you that um, the uh, hub. Uh, in the use will have active outdoor spaces for for a barbecue and for sitting and and, uh, and a little bit of active spaces um, which we're showing on the ground floor uh, on the left and it goes from the corner to to uh, around the tree and to uh, to about the middle of the site um, on the second floor above the hub will be an outdoor terrace it's quite sizable that's for the housing um, and it's uh, separate and private. Uh, both spaces or both uses want to have their own separate space. Um, and um, so that, that'll be great for the housing and great for the hub. And then we also have a small outdoor space on the uh, east end of the site, on the right side of the site that uh, can also be used by the hub. So uh, with that greenery, and as, as you mentioned, the edge of the uh, terrace could be such a uh, special screen. So the next slide talks a little bit or, or shows, go next, go um, talks a little. A, John has a question. He said, oh. where are the entrance to the housing units? Can you just show yes. the arrow? Uh, yeah, so Akshita, the hub is, uh, yeah, housing is entering on that end and the hub is entering on the other end. So great, thanks over there. I'd, I'd also like to comment the outdoor area uh, that's not attached to the building in any way. Um, you, I think you want to have some way of kind of supervising. Um, so because that also used to be a, a place where homeless people congregated. Right. Uh, and since these are 15, 15, okay, 21, fine. But they're also uh, as, as young as 15 you might want to have something that you could kind of easily supervise or have an eye on. What yep. Is. Good point. Absolutely. Those are, those are, uh, uh, yes, always a concern. Yeah. Next, next place. <clears throat> um, so um, here's some proposed uh, or uh, possible landscape elements. We just thought whether to see whether you have any comments or thoughts or preferences. Um, the one on the left shows a, a, a wooden um, bench that's uh, on uh, that's on top of a uh, of a raised edge, so a, a seat wall we call it, but it's a, a wooden finish with the landscaping behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, on, as compare in comparison, on the right is a concrete seat wall that uh, divides the planting and sometimes you have raised planting on one side and then you can sit on top of the seat wall. Um, or we could just have a, a more conventional um, bench type, um, meaning separate seating. Um, and so if you'd like to uh, indicate a preference or just make any kind of comments about seating within this area, feel free to unmute and just go ahead and and say, or we're posting notes, that's great. Greenery yes. should also serve as a space to reduce heat islands and cool the gathering space. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, green, greenery is very important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we've got a one for Monica, which I assume one is, one should be to the left. One, two, three, going left to right. We didn't number them, but uh, uh, skateboards, yes, uh, that's true. You have to be careful of the uh, uh, of uh, having skateboard skateboard guards or whatever, so things don't get too beat up. Uh, more plants and flowers, yes, absolutely. Trees, Trees are really critical. You also said traditional bench. I'm going to read in the chat box. Okay, 
Great. And we have um, number one on the left from Doran. Okay. Does number one, is that, it, it, is there a play structure for children that would be? Mm -hmm. In the background. And yes, we are. Uh, yes, we are looking for a play. We are looking at play structures as well. Because will some of these young people be single parents? They will. Okay. Or even married. Yes, both can. Both are possibilities. Okay. But yes. Good. We have Karen said number three. Doran um, said, "How about a dog poop station?" Great yes. idea. <laughs> yeah. And, and, something we've we've talked about um yes. and that's partly yeah. because um uh many people have uh, support animals and um so that 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 can be important mm -hmm. helen said could the space be used for outdoor activities like a stage area if so the seating could be multiple levels mm -hmm. stage area is a great idea actually that's that's a a, a great idea because uh you know to have a little party out there and you know have your DJ up a, a little bit higher, or uh, you know, a speaker, or uh, you know, a musical performer. That that would that's that's nice. Alex said, "Would it be cool to have the youth be able to grow their own food to become more sustainable and self-sustaining?" Yeah, great idea too. Great idea too. Yep. No, and well, and gardening can be uh, actually a very therapeutic activity. Um, and, and sometimes people are transformed just through the, through the act of gardening. Yeah. And big believer in activation, I see from the chat. Okay, well, these are all great thoughts and contributed new ideas that uh, will encourage us to expand our, our uh, vision. So, okay, let's go on to the next. Um, these are about planters um, and uh, community beds. The one on the left is a wood, uh, wood uh, sort of fairly traditional box raised planter beds. The, the second one from the left uh, is uh, where they're using uh, metal containers and it almost looks like wash basins um, and, and uh, they can be, they have a kind of <laughs> Uh, sort of lively, almost funky kind of uh, vision. Um, the third from the left, second from the right is a fairly traditional planner with a concrete shape. And then the uh, far right is one that's wrapped wrapped in wood. Um, uh, any um, on the podium, sorry, above the hub, the raised uh, deck that we talked about, particularly we are likely to have some kind of raised planters because we don't have soil to plant in in the same way. On the ground level, we're, we're going to be planting into the ground so we wouldn't have those, uh, likely we won't have as many uh, of those sort of planters, but the garden beds uh, in both cases. Oh, thank you. Wow, what a great uh, assistant here, pulling everything up in real time. So um, any, uh, why don't you give us any thoughts on any of these and any preferences or new suggestions, which you're already doing a great, wow, that's uh, wood is a maintenance concern. You are absolutely right. That's, uh, that's something that uh, is, is good to think about. David um, said, I like the concrete and wrap planters as I feel they will wear better and still look okay in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then Brianna said, how about an emergency button similar to the ones at college like San Jose State? This way for both hub and housing, there would be a direct emergency line. Well, thank you, Brianna, for that. Yeah. Well, and uh, David, you're, you're, you're talking like a, a real facilities guy here in terms of thinking of long-term maintenance and long-term durability. It's a, but it's a very good, it's a good, very good point. And water to auto irrigated. We are uh, likely uh, it it will be irrigated. So um, we we um, uh, we do uh, provide irrigation as part of our design. Okay. James said number two would be great for individual gardens for occupants. Mm-hmm. Great. And then concrete can be easily repainted. 
in the event of graffiti from Susan and would be would would be a problem. Lauren said plus one to David's foot, which is concrete. Yeah, boy, what a group that's thinking about all these uh, maintenance concerns. That's good. Yeah, graffiti is it can be an issue for sure. And we will be uh, uh, we're aware of that. We'll be careful that we'll be thinking of graffiti coatings on the building, for example, uh, or uh, ways to um, let's say let's just say it's it's in our area of concern. We will be thinking about it. <clears throat> and let's see. There's another. You know what happens here? Okay. Yep, yep. Can art be applied to the planters? The answer is yes, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Um, or um, if not planters, it might be uh, landscape walls or you know, like that concrete wall that we showed in this slide before. Um, if you've ever been to Spain, um, in Barcelona, there's this beautiful seat wall that uh, Gaudí did where he applied uh, mosaics um, and um, so uh, landscape features can have art you are you're right yes. and monica said you can paint the planter boxes too that's a suggestion yep that's true okay any other shall we finish up any other thoughts here okay great thank you let's move to the next which is about plantings. And uh, we've already heard from you um, some of that. Um, on the lower row and the second, in the middle row on the right, evergreen ash. Um, so we have some of the trees that we might be, uh, or that we are considering. Um, and, on, uh, and on the top row and the middle row are uh, bushes, grasses, um, lower landscaping that are some of the examples. This is not at all the complete scent, uh, set, but some of the examples that we are thinking of including. Um, we, uh, color is great. Um, uh, low, you know, drought tolerant and low water use is critical, um, particularly for, for, uh, for this climate. So we will be looking at plants that are absolutely, plants have to be low water use. Uh, that's required by our, our code and that's how we design. So um, usually they're watered to establish and, uh, and uh, but they are, are low water use plants. Any other, uh, any uh, thoughts, suggestions, um, uh, favorite trees to consider? Um, uh, any any other input on on possible plantings? Susan said, "Native plants are a good idea. Deep myrtle mm -hmm. is not a shade tree; needs some shade." Thank you. Mm -hmm. Brianna said, love the maple. What about wisteria? Ooh, yeah. That's a great one. Thank you, Brianna. Um, other ideas? Or even just colors or heights, etc. Any plants that are particularly associated with your neighborhoods nearby? Prunes. <laughs> Prunes. Hmm. Interesting. Or apricots. Apricots are prunes. That's what was grown around here. <laughs> okay. Put it down. That's tasty. Anything that grows well around your house now that you that does well in the neighborhood? Prunes and apricots. Um, at my house, we have a persimmon tree that's been around since our neighborhood was an orchard. Oh, that's that's interesting. I. Yeah. I have two persimmon trees in my front yard planted by the previous owner who was Japanese. Yeah. And I would not suggest them because they're very messy. Mm. Um, it, yeah. it, it's, a, it's a wonderful crop, but it's high maintenance. Yeah, mm. interesting. It's quite good. David okay. said cherries. Okay. This is the will be great on a trellis. 
And Helen said, our street has crepe myrtle, which are now about 30 years old and do provide shade. Hmm. Oh. And they do provide shade. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. all right. And then Don said, thinking about sustainability, what about fruit trees? Yeah. Fruit trees are always controversial because, as, as mentioned, they can be maintenance. You know, they they can be messy if you're if you're not. Um, so some some people, some clients, some residents like them, and and others are are a little leery about about the mess that they can make. So yeah. So if we were to do fruit trees. I think cherries. This is a suggestion. What other trees would be suitable for fruits? And Amy said apricots are great too. Yeah, they're small. But yeah. there, avocado trees grow well around here. Hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, great, thanks. Uh, why don't we move on to the next slide, which... Uh, Brianna, you said if there's going to be a garden space, I'm sure there will be fruit trees there. That's great. Yeah. So uh, uh, we'd like to give you a, a few minutes just for any open comments, any things that we haven't uh, thought about um, or we should think about any, uh, and, and one of the things as mentioned, our intention is the next meeting on October 13th is to show you a design that is what more about what the building looks like and, and uh, how it's treated and some potential colors and, and get input from you at that point. But uh, we'd be happy to uh, take any suggestions uh, that you'd like to make um, uh, now. Uh, some of you were in the previous meeting, we noted those, but now I know we know there are several people that are new and we'd love to hear any of your thoughts on how, we, how, we sh how should we go about this. Um, uh, a lot can be done to make up for um, minimal um, architecture. Trees hide a lot, and also um, murals. You can, on a, on a, um, a stucco-sided uh, um, building, you can, you, can, you, you can do a lot of, what the tortioi, fulii, you can paint a lot of architectural uh, items that don't actually, aren't really there. <laughs> right. But you can eat them. Yeah. And, uh, but the one other thing, and I, I do want to say, security is, I'm sure you've already thought of this, but I just want to say security is important. Um, there have been some crimes reported in the parking lot of the grocery store. And, uh, you know, you want safe, the kids to be totally safe. Absolutely. That's, it's, it's a big concern. And we've, we've heard it. Um, we've definitely talked about it to begin with. Uh, I, 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 in in um, defense of architecture, um, we hope that uh, the trees add to what is a, a really beautiful building already, and that we're, we don't have to hide anything. Um, you know, we'll do our best to do something that uh, looks uh, um, uh, lively and welcoming and uh, creates a sense of home yeah. for the people who are in the youth center or the people who are living in the housing above. It's, it's our goal. And, and we know how important this building is for, for you, the neighborhood, for, for, the, uh, for the kids who are in the, in the hub and, and for the residents. It's, 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 it's really important. So we'll do our best. And, and I also want to say that um, if you plant trees <clears throat> between the building and the freeway, it mm -hmm. will muffle sound. It would also, mm -hmm. um, since that's the southern exposure, it will cool it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good point. Absolutely. Yep. Provides a nice, uh, nice buffer and a cooling element to the southern facing um, um, residents. Yeah. And by the way, I forgot to mention, but um, for those persons facing the uh, highway, we will have uh, really well designed acoustical uh, windows and walls, so it'll be quiet. And yeah. secondly, um, we will provide a, a ventilation system 
so that you don't have to open the window for cooling and heating. You'll get fresh air that's filtered um, so that it's, uh, it's as healthy as possible. That's very good. <clears throat> Okay, let's see, we're having important plant trees here running. Okay, any other uh, outdoor fire pit? Um, that's a nice idea. Hmm. Yep, yeah. we have sometimes done that. Anybody else? How about some of the uh, persons who have not said anything from the other uh, pieces? Uh, any youth who wants to uh, unmute themselves and just call out yeah. what you guys are thinking, please do so at, as well. And if you feel more comfortable with chat box, you can also type it in chat box and we can put it on here. But we haven't heard from you. Um, I have a suggestion, but it doesn't really have to do with like architecture. Um, I don't know if you guys talked about this before, but I think it's important to um, think about transportation because I know that like sometimes a barrier for youth to get to the services is that they don't have a car or they can't access the bus for whatever reason. So is there a way that you guys could like help them with that? That's a great question, Cuba. Yeah. Um, I actually um, have spoken with VTA um, and because there's a bus stop um, and also light rail station nearby. I think that's something that we can um, uh, explore further in terms of how we can design the site to best accommodate easy access for transportation. Um, if you do take, people do take public transportation, but if there's any specific programs and supports, that's certainly something we can explore um, with you and the county as well. Um, Don, do you have any thoughts about this in terms of help support for youth transportation to that? Yeah, you know, city department, we do we do support transportation, and I want to invite Maricela or Monica to maybe um, comment on that, since uh, Monica is with the the manager for the current hub right now. Thank you, Don. Is Maricela on? Good evening. I would say, with respect to transportation, our youth <clears throat> generally they do rely on public transportation, but they also utilize their own bikes, so very important to have a bike rack. There's also the use of Uber, so make space for drop-offs, uh, safe space for drop-offs and pickups using Uber or Lyft. Yep, yep, bike, uh, bike um, storage rooms and um, um, and making sure that it's uh, easy to store and use. And definitely we have place for a uh, 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 drop off for- Monica for, said, uh, yeah. we also connect them to uplift passes. So yes, our site design definitely want to incorporate drop off with Uber, bike storage outside and inside as well. Um, other comments from youth, if you guys want to unmute yourself anytime. Please feel free to do that. If um, you want to type in a chat box, just feel free to do that as well. Or anyone else who haven't spoken? Or Nayeli, if you have any additional thoughts? Hi, I'm sorry. Um, I haven't heard the part where um, would they be sharing rooms with other people or they will be having their own rooms? Uh, so let me go over the results real quick again. So, uh, sorry, Marie, can you repeat yourself? Did you say will there be having our own, your own rooms? rooms? Sharing uh, rooms. rooms. Ah, yes. That's a great question. Um, we are working with the county in terms of the units and housing portion. Andrew, would you like to comment on this? I'll defer to Natalie. Natalie, you've got... You're I'm muted, 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 Natalie. Sorry about, Sorry that. about that. Um, um, 
Sorry, Andrew, Sorry, can you repeat, can you that? repeat that? Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. The question, uh, Natalie, was about, uh, was will people be sharing rooms or will they be able to have their own, I assume, bedroom? Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, so so uh, these, so are, these apartments. are apartments. Um, um, households, households qualify, qualify individually. individually. Oh, apologies. Oh, apologies. There's, an There's an echo. Uh, uh, sorry about sorry that. About that. Okay. All right, I'll try to give a brief answer. Uh, so each household individually qualifies. So it works like a normal apartment. So your household, your household size matches the number of bedrooms within the apartment. Thank you, Natalie. Um, we also have, Susan says security, storage of bikes is important, um, noted. Any other comments from the youth? Um, I have another suggestion. Um, I don't know if you guys have talked about this, but I also think it's important to do like advertising and outreach just because like with my own personal experience, I never knew that places like this existed. So um, I think it's important, like maybe if you can advertise at like schools or something, um, just because a lot of people don't know that they can get this kind of help. Thank you for um, that suggestion, Hiva. John and Marcel, do you have uh, comments to, to what Hiva just mentioned? And I'd like to introduce um, San Jose City College staff as well here on the line, to just to introduce yourself. I'm sorry, what was the question again? Was that pertaining to um, whether or not? So, so I thank you for that feedback. I think that, you know, we will definitely advertise the hub through our social media sites, definitely have a presence in the schools to ensure that every foster youth is aware of this resource. So thank you for letting us know and providing feedback. Thank you, Marcella. Uh, um, yeah. Like, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, please. Um, so I see the person that answered the question saying about that it will be like an apartment um, complex wise. Um, just a question. Now, mostly to get accepted to be able to be housed in an apartment, they usually do your background check. They also do, um, you know, credit card history and stuff like that. Now, if this person um, is the hub helping their community in having, um, you know, the youths then build up, building up their credit score, or is it just going based on their income, income wise? Sorry, I'll defer that again to Don and Maricela. It actually sounds like they're asking about eligibility for housing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if anyone here wants to elaborate on that piece, please do so, because I think it's tied to the population mix and who actually will be on site. Um, would Natalie and Andrew like to answer that question? Um, yeah, I think I can help answer the question. So as far as uh, right now, um, that is still in the works um, that is still being talked about. However, um, our suggestions and our wants and our desires are for um, the housing to be only um, available to foster youth as well as um, juvenile justice uh, involved youth. Um, and we would like to have an age cap, um, but as of uh, as far as what age, um, we are still talking about that and we're still talking about um, exactly which populations will be eligible for the housing. But mm -hmm. as far as the hub, um, as long as um, you're, you have been in foster care and you're, um, um, you're um, 24 or younger, um, you're more than welcome to come in and receive services. Thank you, Nayeli. Um, uh, Allied in the Boat is working with the county really closely on looking at best practices in terms of housing and making sure that whatever we're proposing and designing 
is going to support all the youth and make sure youth's future are successful um, as much as we can via the design process and support. Consuelo um, from the County of Support Housing has her hand up. Please go ahead. Hi, Macy. Good afternoon, everybody. Consuelo Hernandez, Director with the Office of Supportive Housing. Sorry, my video is not working. My computer crashed earlier, but I hope you can hear me. I, Maria, thank you for the question. I wanted to um, make sure that we understood your question. Um, if I understand correctly, it's what what is the process for anybody that wants to rent one of the apartments in the future? Um, and whether background checks um, and those types of things that you typically see when you want to rent an apartment in the open market, what are those requirements? And so we do have a boat as our partner and allied um, in providing property management. Um, and part of the property manager's task and their role is to come up with screening criteria for future tenants, which is different than their enrollment eligibility in a housing program that we might be partnering with SSA on for TE use. Um, so there's like basic property management requirements that each household um, has to meet. Um, so, you know, whether that is um, background or credit, you know, that's pretty standard across our affordable housing portfolio. But then we have special programs that are designed to screen certain clients in. So, for instance, if we do have some units that are set aside for the Tay population, there are like mitigation measures that we use. So we can say my, um, you know, my case manager and my enrollment in this program is helping me pay for, the, for rent until I find a job. You know, we take all of that into consideration. And as we, as we get closer to developing, you know, who actually will live here, um, we can share with you all those criteria that we have for everybody and then what are the special circumstances and allocations that we make for participants of programs like the Tay population that we talked about earlier? And, and we'll try to simplify it so that it's very clear, but you know, just the way you think about it is like any other apartment building that you wanna rent an apartment, we ask the same question. Thank you, Consuelo. Um, Thank I'm you sorry. so much. Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, but thank you so much for clarifying, clarifying that question. Um, that's very helpful. And I like your vision and your idea. Um, I myself am from the community as a student, also as a full-time worker. And um, I, you know, I love the whole idea of what you guys are creating as right now. Um, at the same time, is just making sure like in the future, if this, you know, it, it, yes, it will be happening this and it's a great idea, but I want to make sure that in the future that, you know, there is um, more support in this type of programs to have, you know, for our foster youth community, if that makes sense. Thank you, Maria, we hear you. And we're really excited to work on this project with you and the youth and also the county um, in order to provide the support that can help you and also the youth who will occupy and use the space, um, the ground floor and others. I also wanna recognize folks in the chat box um, and just read out some of the comments. Uh, Don said, in unit, wash and dryers are extremely sought after among many apartment complexes and it's wonderful in reducing tension among residents if there's a shared laundry facility. Of course, there are trade-offs, so we'll definitely take this into consideration. Um, and then will there be classroom spaces for classes uh, on household finance, classes on buying or not buying a car and how to do that. Um, we definitely have been working with the county on hub specific spaces, but I wanted to also ask if Don and Marcel have any comments into the programming spaces of the hub. Um, I can actually answer that question. Um, I'm the current hub and ILP program manager, and we oversee, well, I oversee the independent living program, which has the case management workshop component. Um, so we do provide workshops based on what youth want um, in around five major areas, and that does include financial literacy, wellness, and um, major aspects of independent living. Thank you, Monica. 
And Blake has a comment. Um, Blake, if you're here, would you like to uh, unmute yourself and share? Um, or I can read it out as well. So yeah, from, yeah, sure. No, obviously, uh, from San Jose City College and formerly of uh, San Jose State University. Um, I'm just thinking about it. A, a lot of young people living in a place, uh, housing, university housing services and uh, things like RAs, a resident advisors, someone who's responsible for making sure there's a sense of community, uh, that when people move in, they feel welcomed and there's um, programming that makes people uh, connect and, and understand what's, you know, um, who's there with them, and then also adherence to community standards. Um, if there's anything I know about putting a bunch of young people in one place living together, uh, there's going to be parties. <laughs> You've got a lot of really fun stuff happening. Um, people invite each other over, and having your live-in mentors are a big part of managing that whole vibe. So uh, anyone who's ever, you know, kind of lived in a dorm, you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Thank you, Blake. And um, Blake, would you like to share a little bit about our discussion on how how we can work with the city college and what your envision as well. Um, so we can share a little time as well with you. Sure. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, Macy and, and, and William and I were um, our vice president of student affairs. Uh, we had a pretty good conversation about what it might look like for um, our college to have uh, students regularly touring. Um, we're, we're right down the block. So we're, we're uh, you know, like a five minute walk from, from the, the site. And then also to be able to teach classes or, or workshops um, at the hub. So if, if there was the ability to have like a classroom space downstairs or somewhere where you could do a program, um, there's a variety of topics under the sun that we teach at City. We would love to offer workshops and, and things that are kind of like a taste of higher education right there on site. Uh, and and we, can, we can have folks come back and forth. So uh, just that exchange. And then when we have on-campus events, we'd love to invite uh, any of the youth there to come and visit us and see what's going on, come for tours, uh, that sort of thing. So we're, we're very happy to be having uh, neighbors. Yeah. Like we're within walking distance. So it's only a block away, less than a block. Awesome. Uh, other comments from the youth? Oh, Michelle has your hand up. Michelle, thanks for your patience. Uh, Michelle, or uh, you? sorry, I think it was an accident. I didn't know how to like um take it. Um, that's okay. Take it off. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. You're fine. If you have any suggestions, just feel free to unmute yourself. Any other comments and thoughts from the youth and anyone in the community? Uh, we have um, is there going to be like mental health services like on site for the youth that are living there? Um, Hiba, that is a great question. We're going to have support services on the housing um, that is separate from the hub services. So we will have uh, services on site um, for all the residents and all the housing units. Um, and the support programs will be structured specifically for this project. So um, you'll have a lot of different supports or referral or on-site um, support and the details we're being worked on right now. And then on the hub, I can't speak for the hub, but um, if county staff wants to chime in on the hub, mental health support services as well, so feel free. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, Hiba, the hub will offer mental health well-being services as well. Um, Okay, I just wanted to know because I think that that's really important, especially if you're like a foster youth who's like struggling with housing. Yeah, I hear you. I think in our previous engagement um, process and also focus group with the youth, we really recognize uh, wellness and health is really important for, for the youth in terms of programming and the support. Um, so we're really keeping that in mind throughout this whole process and the design and putting that as a for foremost priority as well. So so I hear you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Please, if I could add, um, yes. I think there's a, a this important distinction between wellness and mental health. Oftentimes those are also very interchangeable and connected. Um, through the hub, through Bill Wilson Center, they, there is wellness services. And through behavioral health services, there is mental health services available to our T population and IOP population as well. So both of those are available. Um, we just need to make a connection to make sure that it is widely recognized and known so that uh, we can connect individuals who need it to those services as they need it. Go down for offering that resource to the youth. Um, anyone else who have any comments, design ideas, thoughts, just any thoughts in general? 
feel free to put on chat box and unmute yourself. I'll give it a few more minutes. This has been an exceedingly well-run meeting. Kudos, congrats, Macy and Abode slash Allied. I love the format you guys had and there's definitely more things to talk about, but just a really productive, constructive meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Your comments is appreciated. Um, Rod, would you like to solicit to any specific feedback from the audience and the youth while you have them? Yeah, I, uh, um, I'm not sure. Uh, we, we had talked about having a summary, um, but I don't, uh, well, do you think we need to summarize? I mean, I think we've, we've gotten good notes. I think people probably are pretty aware of the conversation. How do you feel? Great. Um, so last call from the audience. Um, if we don't have anything else. We can go back to our main room and wrap okay. this up. Oh, take care. I might have something for yeah. like, somebody else in experience. But okay. like talking to somebody else, what if they have a bad record and like they're trying to change their life? Are you guys going to be willing to accept them into the program? Uh, is this specific to the hubs um, programs? Yes. Or, okay. That's uh, something Don and Don can answer maybe. As long as you're a former foster youth, the hub is going to be open to um, to all those youth, including um, juvenile justice involved youth as well. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Of course, there's safety considerations as well, and so you know there has you know it, if. There is the expectation that when people arrive there, um, they should be behaving in a, in a way that is consistent with the expectations of that facility. Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Victor. Okay, so if we can go to the main page. I know it's been about an hour and a half and we don't want to take too much of people's evenings. So uh, maybe wrap it up here. Yes, if you can switch back actually to the PowerPoint. And again, um, anytime you have any additional comments, put it in the Google form. I will put the link again in the Dropbox if you didn't get your comments out today. Um, and I can share that with our team or you can reach out to me anytime to set up a meeting or just call me or text me. I'm gonna put this in the chat box again. Um, okay, so uh, feedback. Um, Paul and Rod, do you want to um, summarize what you've heard today from the audience? Um, simple summary. Oh, thank you, Maria. I... Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, from what you heard, just some takeaway points. Okay, well, very quick summary because, um, yes, I mean, we it, it, great to hear. Um, the, the art is very important. Landscape is very important. Um, the, um, uh, we got great input on that landscaping and various issues, um, uh, great to, you know, and then we got a lot of new ideas about, uh, you know, the, uh, the dog park idea and um, <clears throat> various ideas to, to think about. So, um, and, and clearly people are um, uh, really, um, I think, supportive of this uh, effort and, um, and well-intentioned in pushing us on to do as good a job as we can. So uh, that's what I take away with this is that um, we're being challenged to do a, a great building and that is clearly what we want to do. Absolutely. And, and thank you, like, for everyone for your time tonight and so many wonderful suggestions. It's, this is just such a great um, engagement tonight to get so much feedback and all of this is going to make the project better. So thank you. Thank you for everyone for taking the time tonight. Thank you, Paul Rod. So next slide. Um, so this is our engagement, uh, second engagement meeting. So I would invite everyone to come back on the 13th of October. I will be sending up individual emails again, but everyone should have their flyers already in the mail, um, but I'll also be following up with the emails. So I welcome you guys to come back um, to look at the actual design that HKIT will be presenting 
as well as our incorporation of all of your feedback today, last time, and also all of the focus group before then. Um, since 2019, when the county had uh, the first engaging meetings, we're also going to have ongoing meetings uh, one on one. So anytime, just reach out to me. Next slide. And then I put this in the chat box. It's a tiny URL because the Google form is a bit long in terms of the length. Um, so you can use this. And this is my email and the general project email. Um, I check both of them. And with that, um, I appreciate everyone's feedback. And if there's any youth who would like to reach out to um, ask about hub services, I invite you to reach out to Monica. And Monica can um, put her, her email in the chat box for any youth who wants to connect to the hub services. So Monica Simon at uh, Bill Wilson Center, so bwcmail.org for any um, services or programs or questions about the hub specifically and get connected to them. So with that being said, um, I thank you again, Susan, former foster mom. Um, I hear your story and I appreciate your support, what you have done with your foster youth son as well. Um, any additional thoughts, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, I wanna take the last two, three minutes, just quickly open up to any last minute Q&A and then we can wrap up. So any Q&A um, from anyone, last minute? If not, <laughs> I will let everyone have their nights back. Thank you for your time and spending time with us and listening to our meeting and presentation. And I will see you next month and also in between uh, this month and next month. So thank you, everyone. Again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, really HJIT. Great thank job. Yeah, Great. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, guys. Bye. Good night. Good night.